Hey, welcome back to Geek Toolkit. Today, we're gonna to talk about making puzzles with lasers. Now, I've seen a couple of videos on this and I've seen a lot of techniques. I feel like my technique is really simple, reliable, and I really, really like the final product that you end up with. The one that I use, I do I make it out of wood. And so the pieces, they're stronger here. Like this doesn't bend so like it would with a cardboard puzzle. That's one of my, my things I hate about cardboard puzzles. You put them in the box and the pieces get bent on the tabs. The other thing is the, the wood, it's an eighth of an inch piece of wood. So you can do a fairly large puzzle on this. You can get bigger pieces fairly inexpensively and lasers cut through this. This is basswood very, very well. You can also get, like I ordered this in a pack of 40. So you can get these in bulk. So if you're trying to do a, um, some kind of like production line for this, this is an easy way to do custom puzzles. Anything that you do custom with a laser or 3D printer, I find that that's a much better way to sell the products later because if you're doing it custom, you don't have to worry about copyright or stealing someone's ideas. You're literally taking somebody's photos or uh, family pictures or whatever, you bring them in and then you can hand them back a puzzle. And that's just a great way to make revenue to pay for these really expensive tools like lasers and 3D printers and so on. So this will be, I think, beneficial for those that are looking to start up a, a business as well as those that just wanna generate something really nice fun craft for themselves or a custom puzzle of some of their favorite artwork. Now we're gonna go through all the steps. We're gonna talk about how do you pick out some photos, like photos that are really good. We'll give you some ideas. I'll talk about things like lines and, and line art are really good because it gives you something to match up in the puzzle. Things like blue skies without clouds, really bad. It's really hard to match that up. So we go to the photo selection. The next thing we're gonna talk about is some free online software that is web-based. Uh, actually, it's open source, so you can even use the source if you wanna modify it. And then we'll go into the next part, which is the laser setup itself. And we're gonna use Lightburn for this. Now Lightburn is paid software, but one of the really important things about this is the alignment of the laser and the puzzle itself to make sure that you're cutting out everything in the right size. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, and then I'll go into some you know, demos of final puzzles that I've generated with this method. I wanna make the most of your time, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is talk about what makes a good puzzle or where do you get some puzzle images from. And I'll talk about two different ways to do this. One is if you're looking to sell the puzzle, you need something that you can use commercially. Pixabay is a great source of images that are typically licensed very easily to do things like sales. Try to avoid things that have too much of the same color in them, like this wolf would probably be, or this Arctic fox, probably be a pain to put together unless you really like puzzles that are have no you know, hints on how to put them together. Uh, if you're doing something personal, then you can do something, uh, you know, you get a lot more flexibility. Uh, another way to get really good images if you're doing personal puzzles is just to search on Pinterest for puzzle ideas, and they will get you a bunch of images that work really, really well. They've got all of the things that you want. You've got a lot of uh, details here that can line up. If I'm putting together this like puzzle of the dog and the cat, uh, where you, you know you just have like a better chance of making a good puzzle. If you do that, it's a really easy source of them. Now this is the puzzle generator we're gonna use. This software is free. It's from Manuel Kasten. Uh, he's got this right here, Jigsaw Open Source, and this is what it looks like. I'll put these links in the video description along with a couple of others that will be useful for you. This is the puzzle generator, and the really the thing here is once you have your image, you're gonna wanna print it out, measure it, and then put those, uh, to convert those inches to millimeters. And you can do that in a, a search engine if you're measuring in inches, I, I shouldn't assume that. But basically you wanna get it down to millimeters because that's what this tool takes. And so what I did is a five by seven set up here. And you can see this puzzle is taller than it is wide. So that makes it means that when you do your tiles, make sure you have more for height than width if you do that, otherwise go the other way. And I wanna show you what happens real quick if you, if you flip this around you get distorted puzzle pieces and that just doesn't look nearly as nice. And if you do them the same, they're still distorted. So there you go. Now you get puzzle pieces that look a little bit nicer. Corner radius is this radius here. So I'll make it something 26 to show you. So if you want a really rounded corner there, I think six works really well just to kind of smooth it out. If you do zero, they'll be squared off. The Jitter is very, very important, especially with LED laser cut puzzles. Here, I'll show you what the jitter does. If you go to zero, the pieces look like this. There's no randomness really to this. The problem is if you laser cut this, pieces will fit together that should not go together and they'll feel like they should. So you wanna add some jitter. And I'll show you what happens if you add too much, then they get a little bit crazy. So if you bounce this off here, you start seeing that you get puzzle pieces that will be very unique 
and they'll only fit together certain ways and that's what you want. Tab size, these are called the tabs, these rounded parts here and I'll show you if you go too small, then you're gonna have a nightmare of a time uh, putting it together. If you go too big, then it overpowers it. So I like it in the about 20% range and that I feel like gives you a nice satisfying click. It's something you can play with as you go with bigger or smaller pieces. The seed is a computer science term. This is the random number generator source. And so the reason this is important is if you lose a puzzle piece and need to regenerate the puzzle, knowing your seed number, you can regenerate exactly the same puzzle if you keep all the other parameters the same. So that is the software for generating the puzzles and the size. Now printing out the puzzles, you can print it out however you want. Just keep in mind, you're gonna have to measure it later. I like to print my puzzles out as a, like a four by six or a five by seven when I'm starting out. And then it makes it really easy to make sure that this is exactly the same size. Another way to do this is you can go to a store or like Shutterfly or Costco or any place that can, that can print out photos or get photo paper printers and print it out there. And then you get a really vibrant uh, colored puzzle. But basically you want the paper that we're gonna glue down to the wood in a second here. So let's go do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we just wanna basically attach the wood and the paper together in a way that all of the corners are very solidly down. So I'm gonna cut around the edges here. Now in this take, I didn't do all four edges, but I do recommend it. And then I used uh, basically a stick glue here, but a spray adhesive works a lot better if you have it on hand. If not, stick glue works in a pinch. Then just press it down, make sure that you have no bubbles and flatten it. Use something like a credit card or a piece of wood to go over and get it all laid down nice. I'm gonna take a second to talk about our sponsor. Now that we basically have the wood and the paper, the next part's put it in the laser. Our sponsor, Two Tree, sent me a TS2 laser that is 20 watts. I'm gonna talk about a couple of features about this laser that make this just a very pleasant experience to make puzzles. And this laser was very, very effective at it because of a couple things. One is it's a 20 watt laser. You're gonna want a lot of power to make sure that you can cut through either the three millimeter or uh, eighth inch ply, whatever you're using for cutting these puzzles uh, out. You need some power to go through all the way on the first pass. You don't wanna to have to take a second pass. You can do it with a 10 watt laser, but a 20 watt laser, you can go much, much faster. This means that if you're trying to mass produce puzzles or you just your time's valuable, right? You don't wanna wait 45 minutes for a puzzle to cut it's much better to cut weight like 15 or 20 minutes to have the entire thing cut based on size. So it does scale up. It's from what I'm seeing about two times the speed of what I was getting with my 10 watt lasers I was using before. The other thing about this laser is it has an autofocus and it has a preset for three millimeter. That makes it very easy to have the laser be focused exactly where you want. The way it does this is it uses a Z motor to move the laser up and down until it's focused correctly where it needs to be. That is super powerful. That means that the laser, when it's at the perfect spot, will have the smallest beam hitting where you're cutting. When you have a small beam, you have what's a small, what's called a kerf, and that means your puzzle pieces will fit together tighter and better. Another thing about this laser is as an air assist. You're gonna want an air assist when you do this. It will not only let you cut cleaner and smoother, but it will reduce some of the charring that you would normally get, so you don't have like those burn lines as you go through around on the paper. So an air assist will give you just a much, much cleaner cut, much more effective, and it will even let you go a little bit faster. Finally, the other thing this laser has is it has gerbil support, which means it works with light burn and laser gerbil. Now, a lot of lasers have this, but you're gonna wanna make sure you have one of those. For this tutorial, I use light burn, and light burn has amazing layout capabilities for your laser so that you can set up your puzzle. What we're gonna do in the next part here is I'm gonna show you how to set this up in Lightburn. I'm gonna be talking over the video because the video had a lot of air and, and uh, you know, air pumps and all that going on at the same time. And so I'll talk over the video and explain what I'm doing. But basically what we're gonna do is line up the laser at the bottom left corner of the puzzle. And then we're gonna make sure that we can do what's called a framing around the puzzle and then make sure that you know everything is lined up and then we just have to tell it to cut. Let's go do that now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from file to import, we're gonna select our SVG, and then we're gonna take it from the middle and drag it to the lower left. This will set our zero, zero point exactly where we want it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna arbitrarily move the laser up into the right a little bit, and this is so later on we can see the laser point. So you see I'm moving the laser there, just kind of a point here. 
Now what I'll do is I'll switch over to the camera and I'll show you how to line up the puzzle to that point where we just moved the laser to. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna home the laser. So you see the laser is kind of off uh, at a point right now. We're gonna hit home over here. And then when we look at the laser, you'll see it basically hit the two limit switches, which is get it set to zero, zero. Now we actually wanna move it up into the left a little bit. So we're gonna force, force it over to this arbitrary point. And now it's over there. That way we can see and line up our wood. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to tell it to uh, lift up 20 millimeters. Now this is using the automated Z. You have to do this manually if you don't have this laser. Now what we can do is we can show the laser using the fire laser button. And that's here on move. And then we can check to see, are we on the corner? There's where the laser is. We're gonna move our corner right there to make it zero, zero. Perfect. Now the next thing we're gonna do Ah, uh, there we go. We're right where we want to be. Next thing we have to do is we're going to set up the framing for this. So let's see. The first thing we'll do is we will tell the thing to cut three millimeters to autofocus. And what that did on this particular laser is that actually sets the current laser position to be the new zero zero coordinate. And this is why the SVG is in the lower left. So now that that's our new zero zero, we're gonna lift it up 20 millimeters. We're gonna do this so we can actually see the laser dot. Then we're going to do a frame. Now to have the laser on, you hold the left shift key, hit the frame button and watch what happens here. You're gonna see the laser stay on as it moves. And now you can test and make sure that the, this is basically where the outer limits of the puzzle will be cut. Now that looks perfect. So all we have to do now is use the macro for this laser to tell it to focus again, and you'll see the Z basically activate, and it will go down, touch off, and go back up to where the perfect length is for three millimeters. You can see the automated Z going there. If you have a manual laser, you'll have to do this part manually. Okay, so now the big reveal, and this is the biggest test really. You get the laser out of the way here, and you're gonna pick the board up, and if everything went well, you should have it lift very cleanly up. And watch this. That is perfect. That came right up. You still see a little bit of smoke there, but the puzzle was cut all the way through. All of the pieces are nice and tight, and we have our puzzle. Very happy with this. Okay, so that wraps it up. We went from everything from picking out a puzzle all the way through lasering a puzzle. And hopefully I gave you enough info in here to be able to do this. Now this wasn't a full light burn tutorial. I was assuming that you knew a little bit about light burn, but if you need some light burn tutorials, let me know. I can either suggest some for you or I'll start making some. I wanna thank Two Trees for sending out the TS2 laser. I'll have links to this laser and some of the stuff I used in this uh, video in the description below. I appreciate those. Some of them may be sponsored links that help support the channel, but really this was a super fun project and I was really impressed with how good it came out and I'm really excited to go make a bunch of lasers now, not only for myself, but also for my daughter. So it should be really great. Thanks for watching and supporting me. I really appreciate it. It's Joe Farrow Geek Toolkit. I'll see you next time.